We've only gone and done it again. Welcome to season six. I haven't said this for a while, but hello, race drivers. This is Enzo with the Race Driver Coach Show. It is season six. It's Monday, the 14th of March, and I can't believe we're back. <laughs> it's nice to be back. It's been too long. In fact, I'm going to do an off season. So we're going to stick to the season like I normally do with F1. So we're starting now because Bahrain's this weekend. Got to fly out on Wednesday. So recording this now, obviously, uh, just before I go, I think... What I'm going to do is finish at Abu Dhabi like we normally do, but then do an off season after Christmas and New Year just to keep you training on the off season, just because that's pretty much when you need help as well. So there'll be two types of shows. Uh, this this show, as normal, will be every Monday. It's usually when I've just about landed from a fly out from a fly away, but that's great. Every Monday, race driver coach show will be here for you throughout the F1 season. So. What have we been doing? What have we been doing since I last seen you? I've been coaching, obviously, Liam Lawson in F2 with his testing, Oli Behrman in F3, his testing, and in F4, I've got Oliver Gray, who's just been signed up by Williams, which is great. Oliver Behrman has just been signed up by the Ferrari Academy, and Liam Lawson's still with Red Bull. So it's really good to be working with top calibre drivers that are on their way. This is what I do it for, really, to be honest. And then all my online coaching, which is taking a big, spike i'd say since covid i've got about 10 drivers from nascar karting formula car you name it um that i coach on zoom on the video and we go through on a weekly chat so i've been doing that a lot and still writing my book for parents by the way so that's going to come out sometime this year so yeah it's been a busy winter um non-stop but now it's just about to get a whole lot busier and i hope you are this show is obviously about you rather than me, so I don't want to carry on talking about those things. But you, I want to make sure that this year you progress. That's pretty much what a coach does, right? A coach is there to help somebody progress in life, progress in their sport, or whatever it progress mentally, progress with emotional control, whatever it is. It's our job as coaches to help the person, the individual, or the group, team, company move forward and I want to make sure that this year you actually do move forward because there's a lot of people and you'll know these people intimately maybe yourself that if you look back on the last year or two you say yeah my life has changed a little bit COVID forced it to change but when it comes to personal performance and how I have progressed as an individual what does that look like have I progressed enough over these years have I become the person I wished I would be when I was a kid, when I was a really small kid and I looked up? Am I that person now? Am I the kind of person who's going to pull this dream off? And very often when you look back on the few years, you're thinking, I haven't really changed that much. I haven't really progressed. I'm still unconfident. I still am not working like I should. I'm still not motivated each day to do stuff. Then I want to put in a plan today to make sure that you do. Now, what I'm going to run you through, and there's a downloaded um, document that I put together just for this episode. So you go to the Race Driver Coach website, which looks like this. Hopefully you've been there. You see this downloads tab at the very top. Click on that. Then what we're going to go through today is this my life snapshot. And you click on this icon. What opens up then is this document. You can download this and keep this. And that's what we're going to be using today because that's pretty much the document. It's a, I've changed the words just for this episode, but that's pretty much the document that I take a, a new client through. Or when we're reviewing the year, halfway through the year, we have a look at this and we find out where we're actually at, what we've got to work on. We've got to create a personal performance plan. And that's what really we're doing essentially here. So there's, there's nine steps that I want to take you through. This is like the best I can do for trying to be one-on-one -on -one coach for you nine steps to absolutely make sure that you have a good year this year or you progress or you find out the truth because you know if you're really struggling to get a, a racing career but you haven't really got the skills to do it this will help you find out and then you can either give up 
or you can improve the skills, but at least we know, and at least we have a plan in place that helps you move forward towards this racing or whatever goal you've got. This can be applied to anything in life. I use this for businesses when I'm working with executives, the people out in different sports. So this works. Let's just see this as being the nine step strategy that I use to help people progress and to hold them accountable every single week so we can make sure they're moving forward towards their dream. So the first step is freshen up your main goal. When it comes to, to you improving your life, when it comes to you going for something, we all have this vision of what we want, right? It's, oh yeah, I want to become this kind of driver in this championship. I want to do this in life. We have a goal, right? That's overriding. If you're here on this show, watching this show, should I say, you probably do have a goal and it probably is in racing. The first thing to do before you try and change or improve anything is just remind the brain what the goal is. What is it that, we're pointing our compass at what's the north star the main overriding pull or push that i have in life that i can pretty much design my whole life to go towards and i want you to freshen it up you might think yeah i know my goal it's to be x that's fine but i want you to make it clear crystal clear in your mind at what it looks like what it'll feel like when you're there and have it big bright bold in your mind of this is what I want. And this is why I want it. This is what it's going to give me. So I want you to amp up your goal just to spring clean it, just to dust off the things because you visit it now and then, but not enough, just to put it on a pedestal and say, this is what my life is going to be all about. And I'm designing it to go chase it. So that's step one. When somebody comes to me about I want to change something. I, want, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be like them, behave this way anymore. I say, okay, what's the goal here? What are we actually shooting for? What's the target? Because without that target, it's a bit difficult to design the days because we're all about reverse engineering, right? So if somebody comes to a goal, I want to have consistency over a lap time. That's fine. But it kind of is a bit flat. We want to say, okay, what's the main goal here? Why do you want to be consistent? What's it contributing to? What's down the road a bit longer, a bit further? And then we reverse engineer it. Okay, consistency might be one of it. But then if we go back from there, what's that mean? That means in order to be consistent, reverse engineer that, I want more emotional control when I'm in the car. Fine, brilliant. That's what we're going to work on now. But you've got to have the main goal so then you can reverse engineer it. So step one is freshen it up. Give it a spring clean and say, you know, this is what I want. And state it, write it down. And again, if you go to the document, so you can see it here, my long-term dream goal. So you could put it there, F1 world champion. If that is your goal, you know, it, it might not be, but it also could be, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just filling this out just to give you an example. So you have it there. And I want you to write out underneath just a few more colorful things about why you want it. Just fill it out. Say, I want it because because it's going to allow me to do this. I want you to amp this dream up so it actually is really important. It's not just I watch Netflix and it looks like a cool thing to do. You've got to have purpose. If you haven't got real purpose, then desire cannot be born. It's your reason why behind the goal that's the real thing. Once we've been into the future, I want to bring you back to the present and for you to look in the mirror. This is where we've got to really be honest. Be honest and say, where am I now? I know what I want. I know it's out there. But let's bring it back now to the timeline of this very day. What's my current situation? What's my budget? Where am I racing at the moment? Where is my new starting point? And you can make this as low as you can. You know, you can say, I'm just sat in my room. I've got no money. I've never raced. And it, or you could say, I'm just in F3. I'm, I was a race winner last year. I can win it this year. Your starting point is individual to you, but you've got to really know where it is. No different to putting something in Waze or Google Maps of saying, right, I want to get to the gym. So you put that in and then it's going to say, well, where are you? And you'll either put current location or you'll put your home address. So now we can start to map it out. Your journey through life is exactly the same. 
You've got to know where you want to go, obviously, because it changes your actions and it changes what you do and how you think and what you focus on. And it allows you to see opportunities once you know what you want and you can hear opportunities. Fine. That's the route you go. But you've got to know where you're coming from. You've got to know where the starting point is. So second down on that document, which is obviously step two, you put in your current situation. So if it is, I'm in F4, a top 10 finisher. I have enough money for one more year. I am, I can't even spell, <laughs> in a top team this year. So this kind of paints the picture now of somebody and where they are on the timeline and what they've got to do this year. Without a doubt, you can't help but know that this is a person that must win. They've got the opportunity because they're in the best kit. They've shown they've got the skill because they're in the top 10 already quite often last season, but they've got to make it count because they've only got one more year of money. So they've got to be start to find sponsorship now for the following year. So when they're starting this season, they've got to invite people, invite uh, potential sponsors to the track, get proposals out there, not proposals, but basically getting in contact with, with companies, knowing what they want, and then sending them a proposal, a brochure for how their racing can help them find clients. And this really starts in the back of the mind what's expected of that driver this season. You can do the same for yours. Where are you right now? And be honest. There's no fluff here. It's like I'm starting from this point. No matter how bad it is, no matter how far away your main goal may be, you've got to become clear on it. We've got to get that map. Third step is when you understand and get clear on what are the three main attributes that you need as an individual to go from where you are now to that big dream. So if you were to say, right, for somebody, if you go third person, if somebody was to go from this F4 championship where they've got pretty good season, pretty good year ahead of them by the looks of it, if they make it happen, what are three personal skills that they need in order to go from this point to their dream goal? What would you say about their character, about their driving, about their mindset, their mentality, the way they work, their approach? What are three main attributes, qualities that that person would need in order for somebody to just take a look at them and say, they're definitely going to make it. Now, if we go back to the document again, I would fill this out by just saying something like, this person would need to be a top salesperson. A lot of people wouldn't even think about that one, but they've got to. They're, they're the type of person that's got to be able to sell sponsorships, sell themselves to the next team next year. So they three teams. They are the person that's out there getting people to say yes. That makes sense. Okay. They've got to be very fast. There's no point you thinking that you're going to get to F1 if you haven't got the skill, the speed in a car in the first place. Because you can have all the money in the world, but if you really suck at driving, it's going to be hard. And then underneath, just to blast out an idea, very good leadership skills. Someone who can lead a team, the type of person who can get the team around them. So when you're in there, your team are not just providing a better service for your teammate. They're actually saying you're the leader. When, when stuff hits the fan, you're the one that carries on going. So I'd say these three skills, these three attributes of someone who's fast, who can sell themselves, can sell the packages they've got, sponsorship packages, and someone who's got good leadership skills. That's pretty much it, right? That's going to be the kind of person that everyone wants to succeed and everyone will want to help. A fast person with good sales and can lead people. This is what you hear about when they talk about some of the top people in any sport and in any industry, right? Not that they're very fast, but they're very good at the skill and they can sell and they can drive people's other people's emotions. They can influence others, which is different to sales. So that's it. You say, right. These are the top skills that I think someone would need to go from where I am to where I want to be. Next, we need to make sure we know and you know how good you are in those areas. This is step four, which is rate yourself in these three areas and play it out. So you go on this form again 
out of 10, you give yourself a little, little grading. So you say, right, I'm going to score myself. As a salesperson, I don't think I'm very good. I can't even pick up the phone to a company and sell and talk to them, let alone sell them on something. I don't even know what I'm selling uh, when it comes to sponsorship. So I'm going to give myself a three, three out of 10. Okay. How quick are you on track? Half a second off everywhere I go. Okay. Half a second. Let's give you five out of 10 for that. Cause that's nowhere near fast enough to go to F1. Okay. Leadership skills. I hardly ever lead my team. They're the ones that are usually picking me up when I've had some bad news. So I'm going to give myself a two. Once you've done your scores, play it out. How will that play out over time? This time next year, if you've got no sales skills whatsoever, you're still a three out of 10, do you think you're going to get sponsorship? Just imagine it now. You're not even going to try because you don't believe you've even got the skills because you're not even going forward. This is if you just carry on as you are, by the way, without improving anything. Then you give yourself a five out of 10 for driving. Nobody wants to employ a five out of 10. They want a nine or a 10 out of 10 if they're going to pay you to race. Sponsors, some sponsors weren't even like that either. They're fed up of seeing the car halfway down the grid or just about in the top 10. And then when you think about leadership skills and you give yourself a two out of 10 for that, that's not going to go down well, is it? You're not going to be able to lead the team. Your teammate is going to be favored by the team. You're never going to get the best kit if there's a choice of who gets the best kit. Your career if you look at it like that and give yourselves threes, fives, and twos, and you stay there, I want you to just understand and hit this home. Be as painful as you can. I want you to understand you're not going to make it. You might be able to get yourself into a GT car with a gentleman driver and just be happy with that. But if you've got a dream of be becoming an F1 world champion, threes, fives, and twos just won't cut it. So what this does nicely is it focuses you on your shortcomings and what needs to be worked on. And this pretty much moves us on to the next step, which is what are your frictions? I've called it what are your frictions. It's, and friction is if something is going forward, progressing, and it has no friction, it will just progress. However, if there's something holding it back, if there's something really tight to it, causing it to slow down, it causes friction. And the thing that's moving no longer moves very quickly and might stop. And I want to know what are your frictions? What are the things that are holding you back externally and internally? So externally is life itself, your life situation, your environment, the way you are, how much money you're earning, the opportunities that you don't have. What are them things that are holding you back? And then mentally, which is internal, what are the things that are holding you back? So when it comes to sales skills, right? Okay, you might externally not have ever had to sell. So you don't really have any experience. So internally, we can learn, we can do a sales course. And also internally, to remove this friction, we can improve our confidence when speaking to people the actual skill of talking and persuasion and people skills on the, on the selling side of it. So that's how you improve that. This, just so you know, becoming aware of your shortcomings, your weaknesses is only you building your personal performance plan, your program. You say, right, I've got the main goal. I've got where I am now. And now I can see my shortcomings. These shortcomings are going to develop the things I'm going to work on and improve throughout this year. Straight away now, you're getting an idea of how to progress, how to make this year better than before, because we're exposing the things that you might have been hiding behind for such a long time. The things that are stopping you, your frictions, we're exposing them. So then we can look at them and come up with a plan of how to improve those things as we're moving forward in the career or whatever it is you're aiming for. Oh, by the way, those first steps that we've just been through, those first five, do that two, three, four, actually monthly. If you really want to get this down, you do it monthly. You do this same form that I've showed you now every single month, the start of the month and say, right, what's my goal again? What, where am I now? What are the things that I need in order to achieve that? And how do I rate myself? And if it hasn't moved, then you spend more time that month on it. So one to five, I would say do monthly, okay? 
every month refresh. Now we're going to move on six to nine. Step six to nine is something I want you to do weekly. Every single week, I want you to do these things, okay? So step six is kind of similar. It's stay to your main goal for that actual week. So what is it? If, if this is Sunday or Monday, right, which it is Monday now and recording this, don't know when you'll be listening or watching it. What's the goal for the week? What do you want to have done globally, like a big goal, as big as you can in one week, by Sunday? And you state that at the start of every week. You take a look at that goal again, just a quick look, the big one, the, the F1 world champion goal. Then you bring it down to, if I wanted to leap towards that within one week, what could I possibly do? And that's when you start to put pen to paper. You start to ask, what is it I can do? I think step seven is pretty obvious. You list out all the jobs that you could do that get you that goal. So if it is, I want to land a sponsor. Then you say, okay, you say, right, what have I got to do now in order to get a sponsor by the time I get to this at the end of this week? Or to be a bit kinder, to get a meeting, a face-to-face -face meeting with a sponsor. That's my big goal for this week. Now, what's the job list? What have I got to do? And then step seven is making that list of things you've got to do every single day in order to get that person to say, yes, I'll have a coffee with you. That's a move forward, right? And if it was a driving thing, you know, I've got to improve my, my skills. How can I get within two tenths of my teammate by the end of this week? And you come out with a list, right? I'm going to get a test day. I'm going to get a track day. I'm going to speak to the engineer, make sure we go over. This is the number seven, the list of things to do. Go over all the data. I'm going to make sure I jump on that sim every single day to go around that track. I am going to close that gap to two tenths for next time we go out. Brilliant. That's another thing that's going to force you forward in the actual week. And then when you think about leadership skills, what would be my goal in that area for this week? Come in. I want to make sure I've got the team on my side more than anyone else. What am I going to do? I'm going to call the team boss. I'm going to call the engineer separately, and I'm just going to catch up with them. I'm going to see how things are going. I'm going to pick their brains about how we can improve compared to last time. I'm going to go and just send a message to the mechanics because I haven't really spoken to them. I'm going to show them and motivate them that we can do this this year. Again, that is going to increase your score from two to whatever it was compared to before. And that is just another thing. This is living your life in a way that's designed, especially or specifically, I mean, towards the main goal, the big one. But then you bring it down to weekly. What's the biggest thing I could do within a week? And then you bring it down to daily. What's the thing I can do today to contribute to that weekly goal? So it is all, again, reverse engineering. If you develop this kind of pattern and this habit of reverse engineering and making sure that every single day then is accountable, it's like a brick in a house building this house, which is your dream. It becomes a process that you are addicted to. It feels like I'm progressing. I'm making movements. You grow with confidence and you can see that things are actually improving. That's how you make this year the best it can be. Much better than last time. And step eight, which I've, I've actually just put it as a separate thing, but it's I can't say it enough, is step eight, execute, execute, execute. It's very simple. But every single day, you've got to make sure you create the person and become the person that does do these things. It's not just I'm going to work really hard for Tuesday, then have the Wednesday, Thursday off, and then I'll put a little bit of work in on Friday. It doesn't work like that. If you're serious about going for this big dream goal that you've got, you've got to attend to every small building brick, which is every day, and make that the best it can be. Have sort of tasks and jobs in there that do force you to move forward. How can you not progress if you're doing that? Or at least how can you not find out the truth to see if you're good enough and then stop wasting your time if you're not? If you're not good enough, fine, at least you know. You're not spending the next 10 years just dreaming and then kind of acting slowly towards something. No, you are moving forward on a decision. Is this going to happen or not? I'm going to give myself to the end of two years to find out. That's what this is all about. Then lastly, step nine, look back on the week and assess. So when you get to the end of the week, did you achieve your main goal? Yes or no? Take a look back on how you were performing over that week. 
Did I show up every day? Was I motivated to actually work? If not, when I wasn't motivated, did I still work? Did I have the discipline to work anyway, even if I didn't feel like it? Did I speak to as many people as I could? Did I push myself or was I lazy? This is no different to when I finished a test session or a race or a qualifying session with a driver. We sit down with the engineer as well. They do their own one, but we do it together sometimes. And we look at their performance over that session that just happened, the last 30 minutes or so. How was I? How were my race starts? How was my first lap performance? How was my race craft? How was, how was I mentally? Did I perform well under pressure? Did I let it get to me? This is what we're doing here, but for life. So the skills or the coaching strategy, so to say, that I use at the track and with my online clients, this is what you're doing right now, but you're doing it for your life. So it's constantly knowing what you want, knowing where you are, being looking in the mirror and saying, this is where I am. And these are my current skills levels, skill levels and attributes compared to what I need to be. And then you're having a goal for the, a real short term goal. You're making sure you work on it. And then you're assessing every single week. This is going to free you. So what you do is you pretty much go through the steps one to nine once a month. And then on a weekly basis, six to nine. So I'll put them in different colors if you've seen the video on this. And if you do that, you will progress and you will find the truth. And that's really how I want to start this season off. I'm going to kind of do this with the show as well. I want the show to be here, providing this much for the drivers. The minute it's here, it's not delivering in these areas. What can I do this week to make it better? So it applies to everything. Relationships. I want to have the best relationship where we're just having fun every time, every day. We love each other. But at the minute, <laughs> I might be, I might be single. I might have just been cheated on again. And then you look at what is it? What is it a person could do personally in order to create a, a nice relationship, a good relationship, and to attract the kind of person they deserve? And you say three things, you rate yourself, you know, maybe it's me, maybe I'm the problem. So you get down to that, and then you work on that if you want to have a good relationships. So this works everywhere. So to cover and to make sure that we're aligned for this coming season, and to make sure that you have a really good year this year, one, know exactly what you want, your goal. Two, look in the mirror. See where you are now. Three, write down the main attributes. Rate yourself in these areas. What are the things that are holding you back? What are your frictions? And then state your main goal for the week. This is where we start to get busy. In the week, what's the main goal for the week? List out what needs to be done. Execute, execute, execute. And then look back on the week and assess. Rinse and repeat. Keep doing this. You're going to get somewhere. I promise. I hope this has been a nice intro to season six. Um, if you've got any questions, let me know. What are your frictions? What are the things that are holding you back? Because that's what we talk about in this show. So let me know in the comments, on the emails, through the website. You can contact me at hundreds of ways now, it seems like, on social media. Just let me know what your frictions are and what's really holding you back from getting what you want out of this year. I hope this helps. See you next time.